you to be part of this meeting. Uh, five minutes is short, and the uh, ecosystem approach to fisheries is a broad topic. Um, and I must say I was a bit puzzled as to how I could uh, present uh, in five minutes this topic. Um, but the guidelines and my own expertise uh, finally gave me little degrees of freedom as to how I could uh, introduce that. So um, I will start with some generalities on the, how the ecosystem approach to fisheries management um, um, and its related indicators uh, are relevant to this topic. Um, EAF aims at uh, long-term use of uh, marine living resources and aim at contributing to global societal goals such as ecological well-being for healthy ecosystems, but as well human well-being with equitable socioeconomic development and benefits, um, including, I would say here, especially from the FAO mandate, through secured fish food supply. EAF indicators are used in management frameworks to develop operational objectives and monitor the effects of management procedures as part of a risk-based approach in, um, in, in uh, strategies of adaptive management. Their scope is, uh, covers ecological, social, economic, and governance, and they can be classified as status, pressure, and response indicators. Um, all this work, and that could be the matter of a full workshop, has been uh, disseminated uh, under the EAF net, which is a participatory network for, uh, for, for um, developing technical guidelines and uh, putting together, bringing together tools to address the ecosystem approach. <laughs> and you can refer to this source if you want more details. But what I want to come to is also in terms of outputs, what are the indicators maintained by FAO at global and regional level. I will go through four uh, high-level, highly integrative indicators, which indeed uh, themselves foster the generation of minimal set of indicators at national and local level, because member countries have obligations to report data for enabling these global indicators to exist. The first one is the status of fishery resources, um, presented in terms of percentage of stocks fished within biologically safe limits and uh, those fished outside of these uh, safe limits uh, has been recently um, adopted as an MDG, Millennium Development Goal Indicators, and uh, are also uh, CBD targets. Um, other ones are the mean trophic level of catches, which can be calculated relatively easily once you have catch per uh, main uh, trophic uh, species groups. Um, from the FAO mandate, again, food fish supply, which uh, you know r results from uh, um, supply and utilization accounts, which itself integrates a lot of data sources. And we also monitor uh, the code of conduct for responsible fisheries uh, implementation through an index uh, and a questionnaire, which we run every two years. So um, then, you know, all these are enabled through um, a number of uh, FAO fishery databases, uh, obligatory reporting uh, requirements from member countries um, result in global and regional uh, long-term time series, 60 years, uh, on capture and aquaculture production, fishing fleet and fishers, and food balance sheet. Um, However, when it comes to relate more closely at local level with um, the ecosystem approach to fisheries, we have set up these information sharing partnerships called FIRMS, Fisheries and Resource Monitoring System, where indicators are gathered by stock and by fishery, uh, fishing activity or, or fisheries management units, and uh, are collected through inventories uh, inventories are collated uh, according to the mandate of the uh, partners, international, regional fishery bodies belonging to the, the firms. And finally, we have a number of uh, other data sources, species fact sheets, uh, regional fishery body competence areas, uh, aquaculture uh, country profiles and fishery country profiles, inventories of aquaculture farms and production systems, introduced species, and global record of fishing vessels, which is started. In terms of how these are served, uh, they are served through the Fisheries Global Information System, FIGIS, uh, where you find about 50 
regional and global databases on fisheries, and uh, we have you know international uh, standards and protocols to uh, disseminate these. Um, as you can see on this, uh, for the statistics, the fact sheets, and the geographic information are disseminated under these international standards. Um, in terms of um, the proposed collaboration, indeed, we can easily share. I mean, it's just guidance as to how you can exploit these products uh, according to FAO data use policies. But then under, um, under the CLME Plus project with which we collaborate, uh, we are uh, looking at developing firms uh, uh, and anchoring it as part in the WECAF area, which is the FAO regional fishery body in this region, uh, strengthening regional and national capacities uh, and expanding firms' knowledge in this region We've already worked with colleagues, some of them present in this room, to extend firms' framework on more social and economic values of fisheries as required. And uh, we can, uh, according to the needs, uh, expand firms' uh, web-based services to, to match the needs of this, uh, of this group and region. Uh, and, and we would be happy to work on developing composite indicators once you bring fisheries, biodiversity, and environment indicators uh, and you share them, you might be, um, we might be clever in finding other uh, composite indicators to work on. And thank you for your attention. Before giving the main links to the information sources I gave, this is an idea as to from how from each fact sheet on a fishery resource, you can build diagrams and graphs of, uh, um, of, of where the, the, the status of uh, the fish stocks stand for a given region, subregion, or species, species groups. Thank you for, for your yeah, attention. Thank you, Mark, very much. Are there any, any questions? Uh, logical